Hello and welcome to the CNC test, the $200 CNC machine. But firstly, let's start with what this thing even actually is. Well, it's a CNC machine made out of aluminum profiles, some steel linear rails, trapezoidal lead screws, of course we have stepper motors, the control board, and the spindle. In this case, the spindle is just a motor, a DC motor powered with 24 volts, but it has a really nice ER11 collet, so you can attach any milling bit you want up to, I think, 11 millimeters. The collets are not included in the kit, you have only one collet for one eighth of an inch milling bit that is 3.175 millimeters. Let's start with the unboxing and then the assembly process. When it comes to what was in the box, everything that you need to build the machine, all the tools that you need to assemble it, and actually a pretty decent instruction. And thanks to that, the assembly process was just extremely straightforward and there was nothing to worry about. The drawings are really clear and Everything was included, just four pieces actually missed and let me check that those were some pieces that I actually end up 3D printing and those are right here to support the control board but except for that the kit was perfect, everything was there and even some additional screws, quite a lot of milling bits, all the tools, like seriously anything you may need to start CNC machining. When it comes to the machine itself, the construction is pretty nice, it's actually pretty strong except for those Plastic pieces, you know, that could be improved, but keep in mind, it's under $200. And as I said, those pieces, those are pretty thick. I'm not really sure what kind of material is that. We have anti backlash nuts on the trapezoidal lid screw, so that's pretty cool. We have solid couplers, so that's also nice. NEMA 17 motors. I am just finishing the assembly process, and I have to say that the assembly process was pretty enjoyable and pretty easy to do. Some of the cables are a little bit too long because actually each cable is just the same length doesn't matter for which axis it is it's ready just like that the CNC machine is assembled now I have to connect it to the computer I should also probably mention that there are no limit switches on this machine and that's not a big problem for me because as you may remember from my previous videos I'm not a huge fan of limit switches, I'm not reusing those as often as I probably should on my machines uh, but if you want to add them to this machine that's pretty easy, you have the connectors on the control board so you just need to add limit switches, connect them and it should work fine the power supply that you can find in the kit is 24 volts and that is mainly for the spindle because it is powered with 24 volts I'm not really sure about the stepper motors because that would be a pretty cool feature if those would be powered with 24 volts too. As always, I will be using CNC.js to control the CNC machine and send the G-code from my computer to the CNC machine. I will use Fusion 360 to generate this G-code and later we will also use Eagle and Flatcam to design and create G-code to make a PCB. This machine is mainly an engraving machine. It can also mill but it is mainly an engraving and that's why you can find so many engraving bits in the kit so let's actually start with that and there was actually a lot of engraving bits in the kit so that's pretty cool uh, I can already tell you that the acceleration on this machine is a joke I will have to definitely change it later because it's just too too slow but as for now I want to run it as it is just to show you what it can do, how it works and then later maybe we'll start with some modifications even if you are dealing with such a small machine, remember about safety because it is really important. And that is the result. And yes, it is mirrored on the y-axis. I have to change that in GRBO. The result is pretty nice, but it's also a pretty simple design and thing actually with a better design with some graphics or some really nice fonts, you can get pretty nice results with engravings like this. But probably you are not going to use only the engraving functionality of this machine, because if you buy a CNC machine, you probably want to mill something. So let's try to do that. 
For demonstration purposes, I will use my good old simple tray model and uh, the same piece of wood that I used for engraving and 3.175 mm, 1 8 of an inch, 4 flute milling bit. The sound of the machine, even with such a light settings, is quite terrifying. Wool machine vibrates a lot and is definitely quite noisy. Separating it from the table with a foam or rubber is definitely a great idea. Don't expect it to be super efficient, especially at cutting harder woods. With proper settings, you should be able to cut most wood types. It's not the machine that you would like to use for any kind of production. It's rather targeted for learning on a budget. This kind of wood can already be used for some nice projects and you can make some pretty cool stuff. But when it comes to usable parts for my projects, I usually go with plywood. So let's see how this machine cuts plywood. This time I designed a two part phone holder and this is just a very quick design. It's far from being perfect, but the point was to actually show you how you can create something useful with a CNC machine and just a piece of plywood. So for that, it's definitely good enough. Once again, I used one millimeter depth of cut and slightly smaller feed rate. Keep in mind that plywood that I used is a laser plywood. It's meant to be cut with a laser. Not sure if that helps to cut it with a CNC machine. Just wanted to point out that it's not a standard plywood. Probably because of milling slower and also the fact that plywood has a bit more even structure, it was easier to mill than the wooden tray. The results are, well, to be post-processed. With a straight cut bit, it should look a lot better. But wood is not the only material that you can CNC machine. I would say that in the project usability spectrum of materials that are easy to mill, acrylic is pretty high, so let's try that. For this test, I designed, and I'm not really sure how to call that, but it combines engraving and a contour cut, so it should be a good test. I started machining, and just when I thought that I am milling a bit too deep, I broke the bit. So I tried again with slightly shallower cut, but unfortunately also broke a bit. The third time I decided to also go slightly slower and that finally was a success, at least of the engraving part. For contour cut, I used a single flute milling bit that I'm usually using on my other CNC machines to cut acrylic or aluminum. As I watched acrylic sticking to the bead, I realized that I am definitely milling too slowly. And as you can see, edges look terrible and you have a big piece of plastic stick to the bead. That's a pretty good example of how not to machine acrylic, but it's not the fault of this machine. We just need to tweak some settings. This time we'll try with a simple curing 0.5 mm depth of cut and 1000 mm per minute. To achieve this feed rate, I had to change max feed rate setting in GRBL but machine seems to handle that pretty well. This time engraving was successful on the first time, no broken bits and also the contour cut turned out pretty well. In some of those letters, you can see that the lines are not that perfect and that is a sign of not perfectly rigid machine. Remember that it's a really low cost CNC, so don't expect too much. When you engrave something in acrylic and light it up from the bottom, you can see how nicely it glows. Building a simple lamp with some kind of a picture engraved in acrylic is a great project idea. And now it's time to try making PCBs with this machine. That's why I even got it in the first place. I wanted to have a small CNC machine that is always ready for making PCBs so that I can quickly create prototypes of my boards. I use my design of PWM to analog signal converter made for 500 watt spindle designed in Eagle. To prepare the G-code, I tried using very old Eagle plugin called PCB to G-code, but for some reason it was crashing all the time. So I switched to Flatcam. Flatcam is really powerful and has plenty of settings. Unfortunately, it is not user-friendly at all. At least that's how I see it. Only after making a few PCBs with this software, I more or less understand how to use it properly. Maybe after making a few more, I will make a tutorial about that. If you want to see it, let me know in the comments. 
Usually for small PCBs like this one you don't really need to do probing, but for bigger PCBs it is essential to actually get a nice result with machining PCBs. Unfortunately there is one big downside and that is the fact that here on the control board there is no probe pin. And that is a bit of a problem because I thought that it would be just connected somewhere else to some other port but it is actually not. I checked and uh, the analog pin number 5 of this microcontroller it's just not connected to anything. So in order to connect the probe to this board, you would actually have to solder a wire directly to the microcontroller. Of course, it is doable and quite easy, but for some people that do not have a lot of experience in soldering, it might be a little bit of a problem. But other than that, everything else on this machine seems to be okay. Maybe not perfect, but okay for machining PCBs. For the insulation milling, I am using a pyramid milling bit. I will link it in the description. It works much better than those bits that I used to engrave with acrylic, as it is super easy to break them, as you saw. On the first try, I just wanted to mold the insulation and I milled a bit too deep. On the second try, I attached the laminate on top of a piece of plywood so that I can easily cut through the material and drill holes. Drilling is probably the most satisfying operation when making PCBs on a CNC machine, especially if we tried before drilling those holes by hand or even with a drill press. It's just not a funny experience and it's pretty easy to break a lot of drill bits. The only problem is that you need to make sure that your flat cam setup is okay. Okay, let's pretend that no one noticed that and try again. The insulation milling is a bit tricky and you need to find the perfect depth of cut for me that seems to be 0.1 to 0.15 mm. Some traces were still too thin on the second PCB, but the contour cut with 0.6 mm depth of cut worked pretty well. And on the third try with insulation depth of 0.12 mm, same settings for drilling and contour, I got a nice PCB. Milling PCBs is not easy, don't expect it to work on the first try. Try a few times and maybe you'll end up with a nice PCB and a nice setup. Is this setup, this CNC machine, perfect for making PCBs or milling in wood or acrylic? Well, probably not, but it is good enough for some use cases, especially if you just want to learn, and with some upgrades it can be great, especially for making small and simple prototypes of PCBs. If you want to build something bigger, you can check out my DIY Dremel CNC project. It's open source and you can find a link to it in the description. And if you want to build something even bigger and more professional, you can check out Indymil. That's also an open source project and you can find all the links and some additional information in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Happy making and see you in the next video.